Hello, everybody. My name is Jim Farmer. I am the festival director of Out on Film, Atlanta's LGBTQ Film Festival. This is our 37th year, and we have some amazing films this year. One of the films that we're showing um, as part of our streaming this year is an extraordinary documentary called Can't Stop Change, Queer Climate Stories from the Florida Frontlines. Um, the film has five directors. I'm here to speak to one of them, um, Yaro Koning, who has... Um, in Atlanta background. So um, first of all, thank you for sharing this film with us. I'm really excited about getting that there to our patrons. But um, just tell me a little bit about you as an Atlantan or, or, or your Atlanta background. And then talk to me about um, yourself as a filmmaker. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So I actually grew up in the Midwest. I was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan, that area, kind of West Michigan side. But I've been down in Atlanta since about 2012. I ended up down here sort of accidentally as part of a volunteer corps program I was in after I finished undergrad. Mm -hmm. And I've been in Atlanta the majority of um, basically my adult life when I choose my own decisions yeah. since 2012. Um, and I've lived in different parts of Atlanta. I've been in East Atlanta most of the time and I'm currently in Decatur. Okay. We're in, we're in Avondale State, so... Hi, yeah, neighbor. That's cool. yeah, yeah. Hi, neighbor. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about yourself as a filmmaker? Yeah, absolutely. So my background is actually not in film. I'll tell you how I got involved in this project in a second. My background is more in environmental education, and I've done some multimedia storytelling projects, but nothing so extensive as this documentary. Mm -hmm. um, myself, as well as a lot of, uh, as well as almost the entirety of our production team, are first-time filmmakers. Yeah. Um, we mostly come from organizing backgrounds, especially at the intersections of queer liberation and climate justice organizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you all decide to make this documentary? Yeah, that's a great question. So before we were thinking of this as a film at all, it was actually being considered more as like an academic paper. So one of our co-directors, Vanessa Raditz, is a PhD candidate at University of Georgia. And they wanted to do a paper on the experiences of queer and trans people after Hurricane Ian specifically. Yeah, They reached out to me because they knew at the time I was down in Florida. I was in Florida from 2021 to 2023, getting my master's degree at Florida Atlantic University. Mm -hmm. And they knew I knew folks in the area. Um, and at the time, I was just helping to connect them with some organizers that I knew. And as we were talking, it became clear that this kind of intersection between climate justice and experiences of queer people was really like Florida was really a hot spot for it. Yeah. Vanessa had Vanessa is a second time filmmaker. They had worked yeah. previously on another film and were like, we could make this into a film. And we kind of built it out from there. We brought in more people into our team, all based on people we had relationships with. Mm -hmm. We brought on collaborators. We were initially picturing a 40 minute rapidly produced mm -hmm. mini documentary and ended up instead with a feature length film. Congratulations on that. I'm sure that, you know, it, it, I mean, obviously it shows in the film how much work you it took for all of you to put this together in terms of the interviews and, and just bringing it together but um i mean obviously you know florida is in a place right now where you know florida is you know there there's an anti lgbtqia pol policy you know sentiment right now there, there's also anti climate change right now i mean what what's it like What's it like for queer people in, in Florida right now or, or for, for, for most people that you know? Yeah, so I just want to preface by saying, you know, I'm not from Florida. I have lived there for a period of time and have been in these conversations, but I don't want to, you know, speak for all queer oh, sure, and trans exactly, people yeah. in the state of Florida. And I know you're not asking me to do that, but I want to, you know, frame that at the beginning. Sure. But um, like, so in our film, we really look at how queer and trans people in Florida are navigating what one of our interviewees calls natural disasters and policy disasters. Mm -hmm. And these are not actually separate in a lot of ways and how people experience them, but it's helpful to think about them a little bit separately for answering your question. So for policy, the policy situation for a lot of queer, queer and trans Floridians is very dire. 
Mm -hmm. um, our film covers legislation passed between 2021 and 2023. So it's still very, very recent. Some of the laws that passed during that period include uh, censorship, surveillance, attacks on bodily autonomy, human rights, and like you mentioned, attacks on the environment. Mm -hmm. And the situation in a lot of ways has only gotten worse. Some of these laws have been held up in courts um, because their constitutionality is very uh, dubious at best, mm -hmm. let's say. But that's not necessarily translating to differences for people on the ground. They're still experiencing this like increased culture of censorship and surveillance and violence, unfortunately. Um, you have an all queer production team on this. Um, can you talk about, you know, how that worked out and why that is so important for you all? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things we were really hoping to do with this film is to really highlight the ways that climate change is a queer issue. And yep. unfortunately, a lot of queer organizations, as well as environmental organizations, they're still not talking to each other the way that yeah. we'd like to see. So there just isn't a lot of storytelling that's focused on environmental issues from a queer and trans lens. And we wanted to create a film <laughs> that could do that. Bless you. Thank you. We wanted to create a film that could do that. Um, we also think it's really important important that people from impacted communities should have the agency and ability to tell their own stories. And so we decided to recruit a production team that was all queer and trans folks, all queer and trans folks based in the South. And I don't even know if we ever had a really big conversation about it. It's just kind of like the ethos that we were all bringing to the project. Yeah. And because we have an organizing background and we're so embedded in queer communities already, it wasn't difficult for us to find people who wanted to be involved with the project um, and being open to first timers and kind of figuring things out as we go uh, made our pool of potential people we could work with a lot bigger too. Gotcha. You, you referenced this earlier, but there, you know, there aren't a whole lot of, of documentaries that deal with environmental issues. I mean, can you talk about, why that's important and, and uh, you know again why you think this film is just so important for this current time that we're in yeah there's like a lot of different ways i can answer that question um, one of them i already alluded to which is that queer organizations and climate organizations are not working together to the extent we think is important mm -hmm. and i think personally i think that's a strategic mistake climate crisis is really, really urgent. And there's growing evidence that it has unique impacts on queer and trans people because queer yeah. and trans people are already vulnerable in so many ways. And those vulnerabilities <laughs> extend <laughs> to experiences of climate crisis with natural disasters, with disaster relief, et cetera. And then from the climate perspective, like climate movements can't really afford to exclude queer and trans people because like we need everybody on board to be able to exactly. address the issues that are going on. And Florida is, you know, we wanted this film to be place-based. It is a film about Florida. Mm -hmm. And we talked to people in Florida as Florida history. Yeah. But in some ways, it's a lot bigger than Florida. A lot of the dynamics we're seeing playing out in Florida are really a microcosm of climate issues, immigrants' rights issues, queer and trans uh, rights issues that are being experienced across the United States and on, across the world, honestly. For, the, for those people who were you know, obviously concerned about environmental issues and want to get more involved in helping to do something about climate change. What what is your what is your initial suggestion? Yeah. So in the film, one of the things we really wanted to do is we didn't want people to just watch it and be like, oh, that sounds bad. <laughs> like there's nothing I can do, right? So we spent a lot of time in the film kind of looking at different strategies for addressing environmental crisis. Mm -hmm. And these strategies, I mean, they can happen, like anybody can get involved with them, whatever skill set you have, there's some place to plug in. There are environmental organizations everywhere. Um, people who have policy mind, good policy is super needed. People who aren't as into the policy sphere, which is totally fine. Like, we are really big fans of mutual aid networks, mm -hmm. especially because a lot of state institutions, as we're in this like time of 
this backlash against queer and trans people, they're not serving queer and trans people. They're not supporting queer and trans people in surviving climate crises. So building up mutual aid networks, getting active in your local community, all of that is good for people and good for the planet. For you as a filmmaker, why would you say that queer representation, queer representation is so important to you? Yeah, so many reasons. Um, I think the first I'll name is that in this wave of censorship mm -hmm. of queer and trans communities, I think representation is even more important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I actually work part-time at, at, at Karis Books here in Decatur. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I work at Karis, which for folks who don't know is one of the oldest feminist bookstores. It is the oldest in the Southeast. And we have this beautiful kids section and it has like all of these amazing like resources for queer and trans young people and for queer and trans adults that didn't exist when I was younger. And it's so amazing to see those. And it's so heartbreaking to know that state institutions in places like Florida are trying to take that away. Mm -hmm. So that's going to leave, like, we're going to need even more representation moving forward. And I don't really th think representation is enough, right? So I don't know where this, the, I don't know who said this first, but it's this idea that, like, representation and visibility without protections is a trap. So I do think some of the pushback we're seeing right now is because of this growing wave in representation and in rights for queer and trans people. Now we're experiencing a backlash. So in our impact campaign, we're really trying to materially resource queer and trans communities and help be part of building up those protections and those safety. So we're not doing representation just on its own. We're doing representation, protection, community safety all wound up together. Huh. Tell me a little bit about the film and where all it's been right now and what your what your hopes for for the film moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So this film came together pretty quickly. We yeah. started talking about it April 2023, and we had our premiere about a year later at the Tampa Bay Transgender Film Festival. So it came yeah. together very quickly. Um, right now, what we're really trying to do is focus on our impact campaign activities. And what that's meant for us is trying to organize community screenings in Florida that can bring people together where folks can also be doing some strategy, some relationship building, some resource distribution, really having like an organizing politic to those screenings. And then for our screenings outside of Florida, we've been working with a lot of universities and academic institutions, as well as queer and environmental organizations to make sure folks can see what's happening in Florida. They can apply those lessons to their communities. And hopefully we can get some allies out of it because the mainstream media depictions of Florida are so um, one-sided and there's so many people, especially in like Northern states who see Florida and even the entire South as like this region that should be left behind. We don't believe that's true. So we want this part of this film's impact to be shifting that narrative about Florida, showing what our interviewee Valencia in the film calls the real Florida, the marginalized communities that are thriving, that are living, that are organizing, that are resisting every single day. Okay, great. The film is Can't Stop Change, Queer Climate Stories from the Florida Frontiers. Um, one of the five directors is Atlanta's Yero Koenig. Thank you so much for sharing this film with us. We really, really like it a lot. I cannot wait for our people our audiences to see it. It is available on our streaming catalog beginning September the 26th. Yara, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thanks so much.